Hello, and welcome to Roly Poly Weight Loss. I'm your host, Roly Poly. Welcome to day 29, uh, and it is a Monday, so it is weigh-in day. Okay. Two seventy-three point zero. Okay. Well, I'm still below my starting weight, uh, so I'll take it. <laughs> um, and now on to the topic. Okay. The topic today is food. Finally, we are finally talking about food. Uh, we put it off for almost 30 days, <laughs> and that was for a really good reason. Um, a big reason why people fail at changing their life is trying to change everything all at once. Um, if you are trying to fit in your new exercise plan while also tracking your diet and trying to make sure you sleep long enough and drink enough water and finding time to make healthy food and somehow fitting in some self-care, you're going to blow up. <laughs> you won't be able to keep track of all the different things at once and fit all of them into your routine. Something will give and you'll feel like a failure and you'll fall off the wagon of change, so to speak. Um, and I say this because I've done this. <laughs> um, so many times, especially January with New Year's resolutions, but so many times I have decided starting tomorrow or Monday or the first or whatever, I'm going to change everything. Everything about me, my whole life is all gonna change new me starting then. Well, guess what? <laughs> New me cannot handle all of those changes. Old me cannot handle all of those changes. <laughs> and new me just vanishes. <laughs> so that is why we have been doing everything incrementally. Um, we introduced working out incrementally first with 15 minute sessions three times a week, then adding a warm up and cool down, and then moving up to 20 minute sessions. And now today, we are doing 30-minute sessions. Uh, starting this week, 30-minute sessions, whoop, three times a week. Okay, still with our warm-up, though. Okay, and then in the future, we're going to be increasing from three times a week to five times a week, which will be three cardio and two weight training. Um, but that is still in the future because that is part of our incremental plan of exercise. So we also talked about sleep and water a while back, um, introducing that after exercise had been started. Um, and now that we are hopefully doing better at each of those <laughs> and we've found the time to fit them into our lives, now we're going to gradually add food or diet. Now, small side note. When I say diet, I am saying diet with a little d, as in the stuff you eat. Not diet with a big D, all caps, like Atkins or Weight Watchers or Keto, whatever. Diet. No. <laughs> we are not touching that yet. This is just small d, just generically speaking, the stuff you are eating. Okay, we will get to big capital diets later. <laughs> now, where to start? <laughs> um, well, a lot of places we could start at, potentially, um, but we are going to ease into things. So, for starters, your eating this week should be just like your eating last week. We can't jump in and change everything if we don't know what we're changing, or why, or what we're changing it to. So the first week is for tracking. Now, some people prefer doing this the analog way. Um, getting some paper or a notebook and just writing down what they eat every day. Um, grid paper can help keep it neat, um, but regular lined notebook paper is also fine. Um, and doing it analog style totally works. 
you can absolutely track your food that way. Um, if you created a bullet journal or something similar, uh, you can track your food in that. Uh, some people incorporate it into their daily pages um, and some keep it as a separate food journal within the larger journal. Um, it kind of depends on whether you want to see it as part of your day or you want to see it as its own food uh, that you can flip through and just see food. So whatever works best for you. Um, and then there's the what I call semi-analog way, um, which is to use a simple document or spreadsheet on the computer. Um, it could be in Word, it could be in Google, um, anything like that. And you're just, again, just noting what you ate on it. Nothing fancy. Um, now this has the advantage of being on the computer. Um, you can access it there. If it's something stored online, you can get to it from different locations on your phone or on your, your computer. Um, but it isn't as complex as an app um, or tracking as many variables. It's just what you input. So it's the exact same things you would put on your analog list. You're just storing them digitally. So that's why I call it semi-analog. Um, now, you can also go full tech <laughs> um, with a variety of apps. Um, I personally use MyFitnessPal, um, and I have off and on for years. <laughs> I mean years. <laughs> um, it has a fairly intuitive layout, which I like, um, and you can change the labels of your meals uh, to add in snacks and such. Uh, you can create up to six meals and give them whatever name you want in whatever order. Um, so if you want to distinguish between like morning and afternoon and evening snacks, um, or if you just want like your three meals and then one broad snack category, um, you can do that. If you are the kind of person who eats a bunch of small meals a day instead of the traditional big three, you can do that. Um, label them whatever it is you want and have those six uh, categories, those six um, uh, sections that you can use for your smaller meals. Um, you can totally do that, okay? And then you plug in your starting weight, your goal weight, uh, your activity level, So if you're very active during the day, moderately active, lightly active, that kind of thing, um, uh, you, you plug in your activity level, and then how much you would like to gain or lose, um, which within one to two pounds a week. And it'll come up with a basic daily calorie goal for you. Um, and yes, I said gain or lose. This app allows for people who want to lose weight, gain weight, or just maintain a weight. Um, so you can use it regardless of what your goals are, and you can continue to use it if your goals change. Um, and it keeps you to the safe, reasonable goals of one to two pounds uh, in either direction per week. Um, so none of this crazy, unachievable 10 pounds a week, you know, on Biggest Loser type of, of nonsense. <laughs> um, safe, reasonably achievable. <laughs> um, so you fill in your goal, uh, and it tells you how many calories you need to eat to achieve that. Um, and it'll also pop out what percentage you should have of carbs, protein, and fat in your day. So out of 100% of what you eat what percentage should be which of those three things. Um, and then you can, of course, go in and customize these. You can change how many calories you want to hit a day. Um, you can change the percentages of your three, your three macronutrients. Um, you can edit it as much as you want. Um, I think one time my numbers came out to something where it was like, uh, it was like, and three calories, like it was just off of the round number and I went in and tweaked it to be the round number or it was gonna bug me. <laughs> so you can go in and edit however you want. But be aware that if you make it something extreme, like it says you should have, I don't know, 1600 calories a day and you go in and say, no, I wanna only aim for 500 calories a day. 
that's a pretty big tweak. <laughs> um, and that's not keeping it to the <laughs> safe, reasonable <laughs> two pounds a week. And also isn't likely to work. <laughs> um, for reasons we'll get to. So um, if you pr pay for the premium version, uh, which I have not, <laughs> um, you can track all kinds of other macros um, besides the um, uh, fat, protein, and carbs, and calories. Um, but most people won't need those, uh, and you certainly won't to start. Um, so that's the prep side. Um, now it's time to actually track a meal. Uh, so when you go to add your food, you have a few options. Um, one that I really like is that with just a swipe, you can copy the same meal from the day before. Um, so if you're the kind of person who has the same snack um, every morning, like packed to go, um, or the kind of person who always has the same breakfast, uh, or almost always, <laughs> um, you can just swipe and it'll add it in easy peasy. And I love that. Um, you can also just go in and add a food to the meal. Um, you can either search for it by name, or you can scan the little barcode on it uh, with your phone. Um, and if you can't find a food, if you've, if you've uh, searched the barcode, or it doesn't have a barcode and it doesn't come up, um, and you've searched for the name and it's not coming up, you can add it yourself. Um, you can go in, give it the name, the um, uh, portion size, any nutrients that you've got for it, and you can add the food. Um, when I first started using this many years ago, I often had to add foods. And it was things with barcodes, things I got from the store that I was like, why is this not here? Well, it was still new. <laughs> Their database wasn't quite as expansive. Um, now, <laughs> everything's in there. <laughs> um, and the biggest problem I have found now is that if I'm looking for something kind of generic, like corn on the cob, okay, there will pop up a dozen different entries for corn on the cob. And they won't necessarily specify if it's small, medium, large ear, if, it, if they're including butter or salt, that kind of thing. Um, so when I tend to add food now, it's because I'm not getting um, clear information from the options and I want to make sure I know what I'm logging. So I'll create my own. And when I create them, I try to give them names that are very clear. Um, you know, large ear of corn, no salt, no butter, <laughs> that kind of thing, so that it's very obvious. Um, and sometimes you might have to look up elsewhere and figure out. For example, an ear of corn does not have the calories just printed right on it. <laughs> and if you're seeing that, Obviously, I had corn the other day, so this is very relevant. If you're seeing that some people list an ear of corn as 60 calories and some list it as just over 200 calories, those are huge differences. And what I found helpful is to just go Google. And often um, the grocery stores or um, the uh, um, food, um, uh, um, uh, like the people who grow corn will list um, you know, a simple ear about this big, and they'll often give inches, um, you know, from the store should be this many calories, these macronutrients. And then you can go, oh, perfect. <laughs> Let me <laughs> calculate that, add my butter, salt, whatever, and then I'll plop that in. Or it might be, oh, okay, that's pretty much identical to this one of the 15 options I'm seeing. I, I just know, okay, that's the one that fits what I'm actually eating that's the one I'll do. So it's not so much nowadays a matter of a food not being there so much as too many options that can be confusing um, or not the best labeling and trying to fit, find one or create one that matches what you are actually eating. But again, that is getting into pretty specific detail. For week one, if you can just put in, hey, I ate corn. <laughs> I mean, if it's got 60 calories and 200 calories, pick one right in the middle in your 110, 120 range and go there, corn, done. Um, 
for now, that is totally good enough. Um, and again, if you're tracking this the analog or semi-analog way, you might just write down ear of corn. <laughs> Not even worry about the calories. But when you really start getting into it and you really want to know what you're hitting, then you want to kind of pay attention to some of those macros. But again, this is just week one, very basic. Okay, so small tangent about corn aside. <laughs> I was talking about adding food. <laughs> um, so you can manually add food, as I've said. Um, there are usually tons of similar options, though. Uh, you can also create recipes. So you can go to the recipe screen, add ingredients, portions. Um, sometimes you'll need macro nu nutrient information. Sometimes you can just search it and it comes up. And bundle it all together, create a recipe. Now that recipe is listed in your recipes, and you can go and add it to your daily food diary anytime. Um, and then you can also create meals. Um, so for example, if your breakfast is always two eggs, two strips of bacon, cup of coffee, then you can create a meal with those exact foods, label it something catchy, <laughs> and then when you add it as a meal, all of the foods will pop up in your daily diary for you. And the cool thing is they pop up as separate foods. So not like a recipe that is one thing, but as each of their individual foods. So for example, one day you have an extra piece of bacon um, or you only have one egg because you ran out. So you can just put in the meal like usual and it'll automatically propagate two eggs, two bacon, cup of coffee. And then you just go in and say, actually, three bacon today, or actually only one egg today. And it just fills it right in for you. And again, this is one of those things where you can just swipe to add yesterday's meal, if that's what you always eat, and it'll just boop, fill it all in for you. Um, so that's what I really like about recipes and meals. Um, and the most common things that you have um, will come to the top of the list when you go to add a food, they'll just automatically be there. Um, and it used to be that it was separated by meals. So um, when you went to add something to breakfast, it would show the things you most commonly ate for breakfast um, that had put in as breakfast in the past. Which, generally speaking, you tend to eat breakfast food at breakfast. <laughs> My problem was with the snacks. <laughs> Morning snack and afternoon snack. I'd often swap what I was eating and if apples was usually in the afternoon, but I had it in the morning today, it wouldn't show up as my common snack item because it was a common afternoon snack item, not a common morning snack item. I'd have to go searching through and find the right apple. Um, but they have since changed it, and now it appears that it is just all your most common foods regardless of meal, which is great. If you have multiple snack times, or if you tend to eat um, things for both lunch and dinner, or if you have those multiple small meals a day and it varies what you eat, um, it's great that you can just see <laughs> the things you most commonly eat regardless of the time of day. <laughs> um, so that's a real great improvement actually. Um, so you can use these various features, put in your food for the day, okay? And you can also track your water um, if you want. Uh, you can also track exercise. Um, now, I, generally speaking, track my exercises on my Fitbit and my Fitbit app. But the good thing about adding your exercises also into your um, food plan tracker, if it's something like um, um, MyFitnessPal, is it will then adjust the amount of calories it allots you for the day. Um, so if you worked out and burned 300 calories, your daily budget might go from 1,600 to 1,900 because you added in those 300 calories of exercise. You now can eat up to 300 calories more than originally scheduled and still be in the green um, to kind of account for the ones you burned off. So that's a reason to add the exercise portion to it. Um, if you are 
uh, analog or semi-analog tracking. You might want to count that as well, but it's not going to be as um, as important that you have it stored in that exact place because it's not calculating for you. Um, now, when you finish for the day, uh, you can save, which is not necessary, it's just fun. Um, save your diary, say, I'm done, and it will give you an estimate of um, if you maintain this calorie intake um, for five weeks, where your weight might be. So if you're, um, uh, if you're still in the green, if you have a few extra calories, um, let's say you had 200 extra calories left today that you didn't eat, you're green by 200, it'll say, if you are green by 200 every day for the next five weeks, theoretically you'll lose this much weight, be at this weight. And so that can be a little fun motivation, but it can also be frustrating <laughs> if you aren't seeing reality match up to that computer algorithm. <laughs> Um, so, and on days where you might have eaten a little over into the red that particular day, then, you know, when it's like, you're not going to lose any weight in the next five weeks, it's like, ugh, <laughs> today was an anomaly. So, <laughs> um, use it at your own discretion. <laughs> Does it make you happy or sad? <laughs> Does it motivate you or stress you or depress you? <laughs> Whether or not you want to actually click that button. <laughs> Um, and again, you don't have to save at the end of the day. Um, it automatically saves every time you add or change something. Um, and this is just a little extra you can do at the end of the day to say, I'm done. Um, and if you then eat something or remember something you forgot to add, you can always go back in and edit it. Um, it doesn't lock down the day or anything. Um, in fact, you can always go back and edit past days. Uh, also, to note, <laughs> If you come in super under your calories, uh, it will pop up a warning about how you might not be eating enough um, and to be careful. And it gives you some advice about eating enough. This also will happen if you edit your daily calorie goal to be super low. Like I said before, if you're like 1600, no way, I want to only be eating 500 calories a day. It will say, hang on a minute. <laughs> um, do you understand how starvation mode works? <laughs> um, so now, that said, some days, for whatever reason, maybe you are super low on your calories. Um, maybe you were sick, you know, in bed with the flu. So you just ate like some broth and 7-Up <laughs> and you just weren't eating much. <laughs> Um, maybe you like did a 10 K that day, just a crazy high amount of exercise and you just couldn't put in enough food to counteract that, that giant expenditure. Um, it happens. <laughs> um, one or two days low here and there won't kill you. <laughs> but if you are consistently getting that warning, uh, that you aren't eating enough or you're consistently trying to have a super low goal, then you might want to look a little closer at it. And we're going to get into a discussion about reasonable goals and super restriction um, coming up. But just just know if you're using an app like this, it will be like, hey, 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 maybe, maybe not. <laughs> so, um, and finally, <laughs> there is a community aspect. Uh, you can add friends. Uh, you can cheer them on for logging in or posting an update. Now you don't see their food and you don't see their calories or any other macros. Um, you just see, hey, this person logged their food today or this person logged their food 10 days in a row or whatever. Um, and then if they lose weight, you can obviously put in your weight. Um, it'll say, hey, this person lost two pounds and you can cheer them on. So it's not um, share, like it's not oversharing. <laughs> it's not telling everyone exactly what you ate, <laughs> but it's just a little cheering section that you can have. Um, and you can add people you know, um, or you can go out into the community and meet people. It's really cool. Um, and then there are also blog posts you can read as part of their community side. Um, they have all kinds of topics uh, in their, their blog. Uh, and the ones that pop up in the app tend to be focused on food, nutrition, etc. Um, but there also will be exercise ones there uh, from time to time. Now, there used to be recipe suggestions 
Um, but I can't find it anymore, so I think it's behind the premium paywall now. Um, certainly some of the other apps <laughs> have a suggested recipe section, so if that's a thing you really are interested in, that might sway you to pick a specific app. Um, so all of that said, <laughs> that is the gist of my fitness pal. <laughs> um, now, there are, as I said, many similar apps which offer pretty similar tools and interfaces. Um, I focused on MyFitnessPal because it's the one I'm most familiar with, but probably 90% of what I said, if not more, will apply to pretty much all of the food tracking apps. <laughs> um, I also tried Calorie Counter for a while, um, uh, and it had fun little like food graphics. Um, which I liked, um, and my plate also has food pictures, um, and again, same basic functions, same basic layout, um, it's, it's simply kind of just an aesthetic thing, which one, you know, do you like more, do you like it to be a little prettier with pictures, do you like it to be a little more straightforward, linear, um, but the apps themselves kind of have basically the same functions. Um, and then there are literally dozens more. <laughs> um, now, some are specific to a particular goal, uh, like counting calories, um, or eating keto, uh, or tracking carbs, or whatever. Um, so if you are, um, once you start tracking, and once you start discovering exactly what you want to track, and what you want to do to lose weight, which will vary from person to person, you might find a specific app that has a specific focus, might be better aligned with what you need. So play around with a couple, see which one works for you, and go for it. <laughs> okay. Now, <laughs> I have mentioned calories, carbs, etc. And now I'm going to briefly touch on them. When you start tracking, if you just manage to write down just breakfast, eggs, and bacon <laughs> without even amounts, that's fine. Okay? And that is why some people might prefer to start with analog or semi-analog before moving up to an app. Because just honestly getting down the bare bone basics of what you ate is sometimes enough. <laughs> um, now, that because that's great. You're tracking. <laughs> You're building a new habit. <laughs> Maybe after a few days, you'll get a mouse in there. Great! You're developing this habit. And if it starts very, very basic, that's fine because you're doing it. Um, now, when you start tracking with an app, all of those calories and carbs and nonsense, they're all basically filled in for you. You don't even have to think about them unless you're adding a new food or creating a recipe. When you're tracking the analog or semi-analog way, it's not the case. They aren't there. Now, I know once, we're only mama tried to start tracking her food, and she did it analog style, of course, but she was trying to track all of the metrics for everything she ate the way that my app did, because I'd showed her my app. So she would have this whole page full of calories and nutrition facts and vitamin A and potassium and all of this, and it would just be the one meal. <laughs> this whole page of nonsense for one meal. And what is that information going to do for you at this point, other than to pretty much guarantee you'll quit doing this time-consuming nonsense? <laughs> um, and when you're tracking the analog way, is that information even helpful? Not at first, honestly. At first, you don't need to know all of your calories, all of your carbs, your potassium, your fat, all of that. You don't need to know it right away. The first goal is to get used to tracking and to not only get used to doing it, but ideally to do it throughout the day. Um, I can't even count the number of times I've put it off until the end of the day and I've ended up forgetting some snack or dessert or whatever that I had. Um, you know, when I, when I was munching on those chips, did I count out one serving or one and a half servings or two servings? I don't remember anymore how many I counted. Um, so the point right now is to get used to tracking 
and to get a general sense of what you're eating and when. And then as you progress, you want to refine this. Know how much milk you put in your coffee. Include the salt you put on your potato, okay? Don't forget that piece of bacon you stole while it was cooking or the handful of your kids' french fries that you ate in the car while you were driving away. All those little things that we forget about or that don't count, they count. <laughs> Get used to tracking them. So in that sense, we don't care right now about calories, protein, stuff like that. Right now, it's about thinking about tracking and making sure that you are actually tracking everything so that you know you're getting it down. If you're so focused on how many carbs are in this potato that you forget to note that you put salt on it and that you also stole a chicken nugget from your kid, then that doesn't help <laughs> right now. So you really wanna get into to tracking in general and noting what you eat, even the stuff that doesn't count because of course it all counts. So in that sense, doing something that's analog or semi-analog might be a good start for you even if you eventually do use an app because you're simply getting used to counting the stuff, not the details that the apps tend to include or focus on. And so remembering to note everything is honestly one of the hardest steps. <laughs> and if you can get yourself in the habit of noting those things, whether it's on paper, on the computer, on an app, that is the habit you wanna be building to start with before you start focusing on all those little macro details. Okay? So, <laughs> this week, your homework and my homework <laughs> is to just note what you eat, <laughs> however that is easiest for you, and to work up to including everything. Um, those extra things in your, uh, that you cook with, um, you know, the oil or salt or whatever that you are cooking things with, um, the condiments <laughs> um, or accessories or whatever that you add, the cream and sugar you add to your milk or the salt and butter you put on your corn, all those little extra bits here and there that go with the bulk of the food. To start with, if you can just write corn, that's great. If you can then include corn with butter and salt, great. If you can then get to corn with one dash of salt and one tab of butter, great. <laughs> um, it's about starting and developing the habit. And not forgetting all those little nibbles here and there. Okay? So, this has been Roly Poly Weight Loss <laughs> um, with our new and improved 30 minute long session um, plus our two minute warm up and cool down. So as always, I am your host, Roly Poly. Please share your tracking experience um, and with the hashtag food tracking. Please do not feel that you need to share what you actually ate. <laughs> um, that is not what um, I'm aiming for. If you want to, that's fine. But this is just about sharing, hey, I tracked today. Hey, I did it throughout the day. Hey, I remembered the sugar in my coffee. <laughs> um, that kind of stuff. Uh, or what uh, method you prefer. If you find an app that has a unique feature, um, or if you have already been using an app and you want to um, say, hey, everyone, look at this one. That's the kind of stuff that I would love for you to share <laughs> um, so that we can all uh, figure out um, what we're doing, how best to do it, and encourage each other, create that sense of community. So again, use the hashtag food tracking. Don't feel you need to share your food, <laughs> but just share the experience of tracking food, <laughs> the art of tracking, as it were, and then we can all share that together. <laughs> and I have five seconds left on my cool down um, because we did it. We made 30 minutes and we completed it. So this has been, as I said, Roly Poly Weight Loss. Please join me next time. <laughs>